Welcome in to another edition of the Wolverine.com podcast here on the Wolverine.com. You could also be watching us live on our YouTube channel. Appreciate no matter which way uh, you choose to consume us. Uh, here on a Friday morning again, it is Michigan, Indiana week. I am joined once again by Ryan Van Bergen, uh, who is fighting off all kinds of germs, it sounds like, at the homestead this week. So, um, Ryan, how's it going? Good. We're doing good, and uh, we're looking forward to these last four games as a household because uh, there was some sad, sad hallways last week. So uh, it's yeah. time to move yeah. on and embrace what's coming. Yeah, so I guess let's start there. Uh, we have, we've had a week to kind of digest what happened uh, last weekend in East Lansing. I know we did, we did two podcasts after the game. We did immediately after, we did Sunday morning. But now that you've had several days to kind of remove yourself from what that was, do you have any final takeaways on that or just any onward, basically? I actually feel pretty good. I've come a long way personally, uh, being emotionally invested. You know, I'm a former player. I uh, played all five years at Michigan. And um, what people don't know is that I was a fan way before I was a player. I was one of those kids that dreamt of playing for Michigan. And so I live and die and breathe like all these people that, that watch these, these uh, feel the same way as they do, maybe even more so because I got to wear the helmet. And I feel like that Michigan State game, the more I thought about it, the more it reminded me of, I'm going to get the year wrong, but I think it was 2016, 2017, oh, Michigan at Ohio State, JT Barrett was short. Those uh, those feelings came back. And so, um, but I didn't go on my truck and I didn't go off the grid for two hours after the game. I was able to <laughs> stake a bus. So I'm proud of myself. And, you know, looking at the game, there's a lot of, to be proud of, of what the team was able to do. It's just a matter of manner of which we lost that hurt so bad. Um there's still a lot of good things about this team. Uh, it's just, it wasn't, or, you know, to this point, it doesn't look like it's going to be the magical year where, you know, we control our own destiny in the driver's seat all the way through the Big Ten championship game. I think that's what we're all waiting for. And we thought we may have had it this year. And we've had to come to the realization that it's not there. It's not off the table, but we're not in the driver's seat necessarily like we were. Yeah. And you know, all it takes is Michigan State losing a game somewhere. Maybe they're not supposed to. And then, Ohio State maybe taking care of Michigan State, and all of a sudden you are back in the driver's seat for your own destiny. So, a lot to play for still. Um, like I said, big you know emotional loss. I think I definitely I definitely come out of it feeling. I mean, I still feel like the opportunity was missed. You can't get past that. But you go back and you look at the game, and you know it's this isn't taking anything away from Michigan State. Like they made enough plays to win, but Michigan uh, left they left meat on the bone as Jim Harbaugh likes to say they left their own opportunities on the on the um, on the field got in their own way and all you can really hope is they had a players only meeting this week uh, it seems like they've reset what their expectations are they've reset you know what their goals are for the rest of the season it's all still in front of them and it sounds like they've had a good week of practice too to get things back on track and get focused so um, that's a good segue here into kind of the first point we wanted to bring up here. I know this is the Indiana preview, but we'll talk about the totality of what the rest of this year looks like. I mean, this is a four game season now and um, you know, it's a four game season with that one in the last, the last weekend of November is a playoff game that determines that's pass fail. If this season was good or not, because you lose that Michigan state game, your margin for error for what you could do the rest of the year is gone. So now that it has become a four game season, um, you know, talk about, you know, put yourself in that locker room, uh, put yourself in, in a type of players only meeting. If you're in there, what are, what's the message of the rest of the team? It's a, the legacy is not gone or, or there's not, there's still that opportunity. Cause that's what you kind of talk about as a senior, especially when you call a players only meeting is what's your legacy going to be. And right now it could be very dark and, and negative and, I'm glad to hear that they had a players only meeting because um, I feel like it's definitely one of those times where you need to channel everybody together and make sure that we're all on the same page and understand having an understanding that, uh, you know, this is not the end of our season. And not only that, but, you know, we take care of business the rest of this season. If we beat Ohio State at the end of the year. Yes, this Michigan State loss will hurt, but it'll be way less significant in the grand scheme of things. And so um, that would be my message is that we're, we're our goal at like Big Ten Media Day was that we came out and we said we're going to beat Ohio State or die trying. You guys played a pretty good football game 
overall at Michigan State? Did we, like you said, leave meat on the bone and lose opportunities? Absolutely. There were some things that were tough to watch. Uh, but with that being the case, there's still – you know, three weeks before that big game where we can continue to improve and challenge Ohio State. And I I realize they're the juggernaut they've been every other year now. They kind of stumbled out of the gates this year, but there's no reason to think that we can't at least match up with them and play a good football game and be there in the fourth quarter. And so uh, my approach would be you got four weeks here to to get ready for that game and that means that you can't lose this one to indiana obviously or or at penn state or home against maryland but this is all opportunities to continue to get better this is where i feel like we've missed um or had uh somewhere to improve under the harbaugh era is that when we get into november it seems like we don't get any better as a team sometimes it's due to injuries sometimes you know there there's uh, extenuating circumstances that make it tough to get better um but that's where I feel like the really, really good teams that you see in the college football playoff year in, year out, they play their best football in November. And so if we can continue to play good football, stay focused and driven like we have been to this point in the season as a team, there's no reason to think that we can't be there for the fourth one. But you got to get this one first. Yeah, and with the, playoff, the first playoff rankings are out, and that, uh, you know, again, the the salt in the wound of the Michigan State game is there is that in that Michigan State was ranked number three, but the committee ranked Michigan seventh. So I think to me the message is pretty clear: you win out, you're you're in, as far mm-hmm. as I'm concerned. So I think that's. I mean, they don't pay attention to that. I, I assume players and coaches aren't really paying attention to that. They're just trying to win regardless. But you know, the message has been sent by the most. You know, the people who make those decisions down the stretch here. So uh, yeah, it, it's it feels it's actually. It's a nice – the schedule's set up pretty nicely for them this year in that, you know, if they had to go on the road and play Penn State this week, maybe you'd be like, ooh, is there going to be a hangover thing? Is this is this too much too soon? But um, Indiana, for as, as pesky as they can be, and you could speak to this, you've, you played in a couple tight ones with Indiana. Um, I guess we'll start there. Like, what is your – yeah. So my first ever Michigan game was Michigan Michigan Notre Dame, uh, two thousand nine. That was the was back and forth at the end of the game. That was uh, when Tate Forcier led you guys back. My second Michigan game was the Indiana game that year, which was thirty six thirty three. And then the next season, you guys went down to Bloomington, and uh, it was forty two thirty five. So you've been in a in a couple of tight, rough and tumble games with that team. What are your memories from that series? A little bit different when I was playing because of the coaching. Um, you know, when we had Rich Rod, and I cannot remember who was their coach. They had just replaced their coach. Hapner, I think, was who they replaced. But um, both of us were running the fastest snow huddle that you can possibly imagine. Um, you know, we were – we called it – I think it was Sonic and then Supersonic. Supersonic, you didn't even call a play. You just lined up and ran the same play again. Um, we played an average, I think, for offensive, defensive guys is to play around six – between 60 and 80 snaps. Me and Mike Martin had 90-plus graded snaps on defense, and we didn't play every snap. There were safeties and guys that play every snap that had 120 graded snaps. It was turbo mode. Um, It was quick game. They threw a lot of swings. So did we. We threw a lot of bubbles. And it was – it felt like a youth soccer game where you see all those kids just, you know, following the ball in like a little cluster everywhere and just, just sprinting. They were always better than advertised and better than what their records were. Um, and I, honestly, you get that at Michigan. I feel like you're, if you're one of the dominant teams in the Big Ten, one of the big name teams, the Indianas, the Purdue's, the the Illinois, they look forward to that game when they play Michigan because it's an opportunity, especially on a night game. Now it's a national stage that all of a sudden, you know, I can have a great game if I'm a player from Indiana and I'm I'm on the national spotlight. I might be on ESPN being talked about as you know a new draft pick, something like that. So <clears throat> you're going to get these guys' best shot and. Uh, you better be ready for it because Nick Sheridan, the OC over at Indiana, is a former Michigan quarterback. He always gets a little taste in his mouth for this game. Mike Hart came to us from Indiana. They're going to feel that on their side. There's some underlying uh, elements to this game that's going to add to the motivation for Indiana to come out and take, take a big swing. So uh, we would better be ready for it because I think Tom Allen's a good coach. I think Indiana's better than a 2-6 and six football team. And uh, I think you're going to see Indiana give us our best shot uh, Saturday in the big house. Well, let me ask you this. Are there, are there any, are there, I mean, these concerns are always there, but do you have any, 
are there is there any thought in your head that this might be some some type of hangover game for Michigan? Vegas has them at nineteen and a half. That doesn't mean anything. You have to go on the field and play the game. Um, so any hangover concerns? Um, possibly. I'd say possibly. I would. Uh, I would say they're mitigated by the what I've been hearing as far as what the team's attitude is, the press conferences, the players only meeting. That puts me at ease a little bit. But there's definitely some concern. Um, you know that we start slow, but. You know, honestly, the tale of the season, including the Michigan State game, is we don't start slow. We start fast. And then the second half comes around and every team makes up ground on us in the second half for the most part, you know, except for maybe the Wisconsin game. Um, So it's not as a concern that we don't come out and play to start the game. It's do we let them hang around? Are they going to be around in the third and fourth quarter? Because taking care of business, what I think that looks like is, no, they're not around. They're not ever within two scores when we get to the second half. But the, the, when you say hangover, I, I could see us keeping them within one score in the third quarter, and all of a sudden we have a turnover and everybody gets a little bit tighter and you sit up straight in your seat. That could happen, I think. I don't think it will, but it's definitely a possibility. So um, interested to see. Yeah, I want to see the first half of the game, but I really want to see the first couple drives of the third quarter. Where is this team at? Because that's where you'll see if they're ready for this four-game end of the season or if we're still sputtering coming out of the half. Yeah, the most ideal uh, third quarter scenario is that, you know, J.J. McCarthy and, and some of the freshmen and, and then the twos are starting to get in the game. I, and I don't think that's too far out of the question. I mean, Indiana, they've played, uh, they scored 15 points against Michigan State this year. They scored a single touchdown against Ohio State. So I feel I feel pretty good that Michigan's in a caliber of those teams. Maybe not quite as good as Ohio State, but, um, you know, I think that, Again, that's that's the question. We, we we've seen some busts defensively, um, even against Northwestern. They got popped uh, with tempo a few times. They got popped in the screen game a couple times. So, you know, the ingredients are there to struggle a little bit. I, I don't. We'll get to game predictions here in a, in a minute, but I think this is more of a big picture reset game for them. Um, it's nice to. Um, it is nice to come off of a. You know, it's not nice to come off of a loss, but if you're going to. It's nice to do it against one of the, the lesser teams in the Big Ten. Uh, now, it sucks that they have to wait all day to play a game, that it's a night game, and, you know, that's that's kind of a bummer. That can linger. That can have some lingering effects too. But, you know, what this is, what this game symbolizes to me, and this is no disrespect to Indiana, um, you know, I think it, it would be a little bit more interesting if Michael Penix was healthy and playing. But, um, like I said before, this is a reset of what the rest of the season needs to be for them. So, We've talked about what's on the line, how it does become a four-game season. What are some things that you need to see as soon as Saturday? Like, it's no debate. It's it's no – there's no time to let it percolate and develop. It has to start Saturday for you to feel good about where this team's headed down the stretch. I would say getting our run game going um, this, this game and getting – some chunk plays. I feel like we've missed a couple chunk plays that we had early in the season where you'd see Quorum or Haskins go for, you know, 20 plus yards. Um, this will be a good test too. Cause that one thing that stood out to Indiana is they kept Kenneth Walker in a box when they played Michigan state. I think he had only a hundred yards rushing. I don't know if he came away with one or two touchdowns, but he didn't have five. And so uh, I'll be interested to see how we can move the ball against them since we're, you know, still pretty run heavy and uh, see what we do. The thing that I need fixed immediately, we will not win the Ohio State game if our red zone offense doesn't generate touchdowns. It's one thing I think everybody agrees. You know, it's tough to agree with everybody, but everybody I feel like in in the the virtual world with us agrees that being in the red zone and coming away with field goals, we've gotten too comfortable settling for the field goal. It's really nice to be able to rely on Moody and to have solid kicking game. I don't undervalue that because it, it just feels like we haven't been there and there's a lot of teams that struggle with that. But, excuse me. Getting into the red zone and, you know, you're looking at our play chart, run, 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 run. I mean, run, 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 field goal. And I feel like we get a little conservative and want to, you know, make sure we don't lose the points. But we've got to take some shots because we talked about on uh, Sunday about Michigan State. Cornelius Johnson in the red zone never had a safety anywhere near him. He was one-on-one on on an island. You know, whether that's we're going to go with him, whether we're going to go with uh, Andre Anthony, uh, whether we want to see Eric all, I'd love to see Eric all get some targets in the red zone. We talked about that too, but 
Um, I'd like to see us trying to score touchdowns, coming away with touchdowns in this Indiana game in the red zone. If we don't fix those red zone lows, it's going to be very tough to win at Penn State with their good defense. And Ohio State, we won't have a chance. They'll score seven, we'll score three, and we'll be out of the game quickly. Yeah, in games like that, you have to go toe to toe and 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 tit for tat with with teams uh, that can score uh, touchdowns. So that's a huge that's a huge key. And I'm I'm with you on the uh, you know to piggyback on the the offense. You know, I'd like to see you know Cade McNamara played the game of his life last week, and I, I think that's taken a lot of heat off of him. Now it helped. You know, I won't say it helps, but uh, that has been boosted by the fact that. Uh, JJ made a couple big mistakes last week and you want to see him get into this game if, if they, the opportunity presents itself. But I think for me, uh, that Cade McNamara performance has to be a springboard into this latter half of the season, it's similar to how it was for Rudock in 2015. Um, if you're going to be able to keep up with an Ohio state and even with a Penn state, um, you're going to have to be able to score points and, and, and do it through the air. And, and the nice thing is it seems like they're starting to settle on, what they might be wide receiver wise. I mean, Andre Anthony, I don't know where he was the first seven games of the year, but he busted out in a big way last week. And, and it seems like they're going to, they're going to add more to his plate. He's one of their top three guys. He's going to be out there. So um, to, to keep the momentum there, I think is important. I think that will help open up the run game. Uh, if you have to devote, obviously, if, you know, the math would dictate if you have to devote more resources to stopping guys over the top, it's going to open things up for those guys underneath. So I need to see that. Uh, defensively, I, it's, it's what we talked about last week. Those run fits, they have to be better. And I think the back seven has to be a little more disciplined when coming up and stopping the run. Um, you know, Northwestern got him a few times. Kenneth Walker did a Kenneth Walker thing last week. Um, you know, defensively, and that's, that's where it, it starts. And the, and the continued development of guys like, uh, like DJ Turner and, and RJ Moten as well. Um, those are young guys that, are going to be here and be factors next year, but they're also, they're here now and they need to, they're going to have to be better, you know, down the road when, when the challenges get a little more difficult. So that's what I'm looking for on both sides of the ball. Yeah. Defensively. I think I, I didn't say much about defensively, but we've got to get guys that when we get hands on the ball, and we're in position, we've got to come away with turnovers. That's the, that's a, that's the next gear defensively. Cause that, there's a lot that happened on the, in the Michigan State game, but one of the drives that I keep coming back to is Moten had an interception right in his hands. He played it beautifully, uh, baited the throw, went up, high-pointed the ball, both hands on it, and it hit the turf. And then they score later that possession. You know, that, that type of play will win you the game at Penn State or lose you the game at Penn State. That will lose or win the game at Ohio State. And um, coming away with turnovers, when we're, especially when we're in good position and they're going to be going for Freifogel, we got to come down with the ball. Got to. Well, let's let's move into the tail end of this now. Game predictions. Uh, if you want to, we'll start with maybe someone that you see as could be a player, a breakout player, a performance of the game. Uh, call your shot, Ryan. I'm thinking Blake Corum's going to go for over 200 yards this game. Uh, I feel like he's got to be very disappointed with the opportunities that he missed uh, in the Michigan State game. You know, the swing pass is going to haunt him because he had nothing but green grass in front of him to go score a touchdown, and we're up three scores in that game early. Um, and I just feel like he's a competitor. He's a fiery guy. It's just going to be eating at him. And I would like to think that he's got a mentality of, oh, Indiana, unfortunately, is just going to be the victim of what's about to happen. Um, I think he's going to have a really good game. I feel like he just – you know, didn't have the game he wanted to against Michigan State and is ready to come back and make up for it. And he's going to get his opportunities. I don't think that we're going to come out and all of a sudden be air raid or anything like that. We're definitely going to test them and see how they stand up against our red game. And I think Haskins is great between the tackles and has some great abilities, but Quorum's a guy that hits home runs. And I feel like he's going to hit one or two big home runs in this game and have some big numbers that make you pop. Got a score for me? Score-wise, I think it'll be still a little bit on the lower side. Um, I do think Indiana's defense is better than we think it is, but I'm thinking it's going to be something in the realm of like 33-17, 33-21. Um, that could be closer. Uh, it, it absolutely could be. I don't see it being much more of a disparity. I think that's kind of where we'll be. But uh, Michigan should handle this by two scores in order for us to feel good about the next three. Sounds, sounds like a plan to me. Uh, the score I sent to Chris Ballas for the picks column was 38-10, to 10, so I will stick with that. Uh, in terms of calling my shot, um, 
because I like Blake Corum over 200 yards. It's not out of the realm of possibility, but it is bold. So I'm going to go bold too. Uh, they're going to be more aggressive uh, in the red zone this week. I think they're going to try and push the ball. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Cade McNamara has four passing touchdowns and a long one to Andre Anthony. I'm, I'm going to double down there. So I would love for you to be right, just like everybody else wins. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just it reminds me, uh, you know, in these games against Indiana, um, Jake Rudock, that was his big passing game that year. I think Shea even had a huge game a couple of years ago against them. So uh, with the arrow kind of pointing upward on Cade McNamara, uh, the ingredients are there. So we'll see. But uh, any other final thoughts before we get out of here, Ryan? No, I'd actually just want to piggyback off what you said. Um, if we're going to have four passing touchdowns, I'd love to see Eric Hall or Schumacher. I'd love to see the tight ends get involved in the red zone. Um, I'd love to see one of these guys get an opportunity and make a touchdown catch. I feel like I didn't look it up, but I feel like statistics, Jim Harbaugh's teams is that the tight ends are good and they're contributors. And then Eric all has earned it. He blocks his ass off every time he runs good routes. He's been secure. It's time to look for him in the red zone. So out of those four touchdowns, I'd like one of those to be to a tight end this game. All right. Well, hopefully we're not here uh, when we come back eating crow about, uh, oh, they just <laughs> ran the ball. Uh, they ran the ball for 350 yards and Cade had 86 yard passing and an interception. So, <laughs> We'll see. Uh, but you'll take the win above all else. That's what we're here for. So, uh, Ryan, I appreciate your time. Uh, guys, thank you for listening. Um, you can follow the Wolverine.com on all social platforms. We're there. Uh, you can get our podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify. We're on Podbean. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching this. Hit that little bell below. Hit the subscribe button. Anything you can do to help us there, uh, we appreciate it. So, uh, for Ryan Van Bergen, this is Anthony Broom. This has been our Indiana preview for the Wolverine.com podcast. We appreciate you, and we'll talk to you after the game. Thanks. Go Blue.